Hi folks, welcome to the status for Ethereum Mechanics for 29 November 2024. This status is being put out on all platforms to get everybody up to sync where we are. Okay, so the agenda is we're going to talk about what was completed this break. Yeah, I've been on vacation for the past week. I've got a lot of stuff on my to-do list done, uh, getting it behind us, which is great. There's still one more task that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to show that mainstream physics is starting to break down and they're starting to move in our direction. Okay, and then we're going to talk about the path forward. So the Physics 2 software has been released. You can get it at the Patreon site at this link if you're a Patreon engineer tier and above or above. Okay, anyone else that doesn't want to become a Patreon engineer tier or above can purchase the software for $199. Just go to the same link. There is a uh, purchase post option there that's something new with Patreon. Now, I made the price kind of high because I don't really want it to get it out there yet. It's still experimental. Hold on. i got to move my cat out of the way. She wants attention. Okay, so the how-to videos have been posted to the... Uh, Ethereal Mechanics YouTube site. They've already been posted to the Patreon members. They've seen them all uh, over a month ago. The first video premiered on November 7th. The second video premiered uh, last night. The next video will premiere in two weeks on December 12th. And the fourth video will premiere on December 26th. These are already there. So they're, they're all ready to be, you know, you can get, you can ask for notification or whatever you want to do for, for the YouTube site. Uh, if you're on my Distinti YouTube site, I'm not going to be posting much more Ethereal Mechanics updates there. So uh, other than this one, to let you know that things have changed from time to time, if you want to see the latest updates, please come either become a Patreon member or sign up to the Ethereal Mechanics YouTube website. The repository, which is at distinti.com, has been updated. And you can basically find new electromagnetism V5 if you go in here. Okay, it'll give you all the links to all of the YouTube videos in order. Now for a new electromagnetism, I recommend you go to uh, use the B versions first. So go uh, basically just skip this guy here, this EM401. Skip him till the end. That's basically all you need to know. The rest, just watch them in order. Um, and it'll be pretty clearly laid out. Okay, in Ethereal Mechanics, we now have posted all the Transvariance videos in order, so you can watch them in order. And I believe there is software that goes with this, but I think it's only been released to Patreon members. I have to update that. Okay, then you can also, uh, the Constructs paper is out there. Just click on the paper. There's no videos for this. There's the electrogravity. You click on the electrogravity. You get to see all the electrogravity stuff in order. And the link to the papers here. Oh, uh, that might be an older version. We may have to see if we get the newer version out there. Okay, so the, keeping, keeping this thing updated has been a pain in my butthole because they keep changing the way this thing works. Um, anyway, that's a gripe for later on. So that now anytime you want to go back to the main... Just click on the picture of Julie and you get back to the main page here. Again, Vortex Algebra. We will have videos. We got the paper, the Vern.3 papers out. There's going to be a 1.4. Uh, and there'll also be a, a simple introduction video for version 1.4. So that is the updated website. And it was updated a couple days ago. Next. Uh, the last task I have for this break is I want to update this really awful intro video to the Ethereal Mechanics. It is awful. i got to get that done. So we can see mainstream moving is moving in our dimension completely relative. Just found viscosity. We've been talking about viscosity since the beginning of Ethereal Mechanics over 20 years ago. They mix matter and antimatter, and it didn't explode, of course not, because in Ethereal Mechanics there is no such thing as matter and antimatter. What you have is matter that has positive inertia and negative inertia. Mixing them together is not a, a, an annihilation event. The whole universe may be evaporating according to a new study. Well, Ethereum Mechanics has been saying since the beginning in 1990s that the universe is not quite evaporating. The better term is sublimating. And then 
she's starting to say there's a there is a crisis in physics. Science is failing. Of course it is. You've got been doing a hundred years and haven't gotten anywhere with the unification of the forces of nature. And I'm going to show you a demonstration of the forces of nature unified under ethereal mechanics at the end. And look at this: space feeling ether theory makes a comeback. Woo hoo hoo hoo! So you know you're 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 a dollar short and a day late. I'm sorry. These guys are going to be, you know. And dark matter doesn't work. The Webb falsified dark matter prediction, and no one cares. Well, in Ethereum Mechanics, we explained why you don't need dark matter to get the answers properly. You get it with a medium, what we call the ether. Okay, and physicists change your mind about dark matter particles. And it just keeps going on. And it's not just Sabine. It's everybody. Um, quantum computing collapse. New dark theory energy might be black holes. They don't know it's in a black hole. And when we get to the cosmology series, we're going to give you a pretty good guess of what we think is a black hole, but we're not going to say it's absolute because all of this stuff is just guesses because we can't go to a black hole and take a sample to be sure yet. So until we can do that, anything out there is just a guess. Okay, and then the breaking down. I don't trust scientists. Yep, and Veritasium has shown that about 50% of the journal articles are complete fabrications and garbage because people need to publish to get funding. So the incentives for science are not the incentives for finding the unified field theory. They're the incentives for producing fantasy so you can get paid, believe it or not. And then this one came up in the search. And I'm like, oh, is this, say, say, what? Oh, and then I find out this isn't Sabine. This is Professor Dave Explains. Oh, this is, well, I looked into this a little bit here. Well, we're going to talk about that in a moment. Okay, so right now we're at the stage, right between stage two and three. I've talked about this before, and I've embellished this. So Arthur C. Clarke had his three stages of scientific advancement. Stage one, new theories are laughed at and ridiculed. You can read this on your own. Stage two, a lot of silence and, well, maybes. And stage three is... Well, there's nothing new. We knew it all the time. And they're, what they're going to say, and I guarantee you, yeah, yeah, the ether was the dark matter all the time. That distinty guy is a crank. So they're going to try to have to dismiss me. So we're going to have to you know, make sure we cross our I's and dot our T's so they can't say that, oh, yeah, you know, whatever it's lame excuses they come with. Because they're going to have to save face. Because they've been spending 100 years going around in circles producing nothing but gibberish. Okay, but this new video that came up in my feed from this Professor Dave Explains, I've never seen this guy before. I looked at some of his other videos, and he's basically just regurgitating what everybody else is publishing. Nothing new to see there. But he seems to have this, this um, savior mentality where you know he's commenting an aspect of her work that I view problematic, and that's at the beginning of this problem with Sabine. And then three and a half, or four and a half minutes in, he goes, you know, basically saying, well, you know, she's not like this guy. He's calling this guy a crank because he she disagrees. But both of them have a common thread of promoting anti-establishment narratives to a degree that's unreasonable. So, my friends, scientific progress occurs when you prove the establishment wrong. The Wright brothers reproved the establishment wrong. Galileo proved the establishment wrong. You can't make scientific progress without questioning the establishment. So this guy who wrote this is a complete moron. I am sorry, he can sue me for that, but he needs to read history on how scientific progress occurs. The leading experts are the biggest, and we're going to have a, a rules of acquisition video on that coming up shortly. So I won't get into too much of it now. Okay, and he also goes after the Electric Universe guys. And I'm not, I'm not unagreeing with this, okay, because these guys are, again, what all the physicists are doing, just coming up with fantasy so they can sell clicks and books and videos. Okay, I'm different. I'm an engineer. I need models to make the machines that are going to save humanity. If people don't follow me, well, that just slows me down from getting to the end. Okay, that's all that's doing. If people want to follow me and fund me, then I can do this full time. Get the, you know, whatever, whatever. I'm going to get there anyway. I don't need clicks to do it. It'd be nice, but I don't need it. But these guys in the Electric Universe are the diametric opposite of Edward Leeds Scallon. Because these guys here believe that the whole universe is based on the electric force. Whereas Edward Leeds Scallon believed that everything would derive from the magnetic force. Now, what I'm going to show you is how ethereal mechanics 
shows that both of those are not quite right. So, oh, I, that should have been lit. So, Theorem Mechanics is based on the Ampere matrix field. This is a vortex expression, not a vector expression. When you take the time derivative and multiply by the direction of the R vector, you end up with the magnetic force and the inertial force. The inertial force is also the gravitic force, or the force of gravity. Not the field of gravity, the force of gravity. Then when you combine these two with a model of matter, then you can arrive at the electric force. And what the ridiculous physicists out there say, oh, the electron doesn't spin. That's not true. According to ethereal mechanics, you cannot get the electric force unless you have a spinning system here. This C is the spinning of the system relative to the medium. With that, you get the electric force. And everything I'm showing you is in natural units here. You multiply everything by km to put it into standard newtons. Km is mu over 4 pi. Now, one of the side benefits of this model of matter is that you can, you can derive the gravitational field. And the other side benefit is that you can derive the gravitational constant from this model. Now, this is the gravitational constant in natural units. If you want it in legacy units, that would be the equation. Uh, if you want, this here is mu naught, which everybody knows. This is the unit charge. This is the speed of light. This is pi. And this is the radius of a preton. You can go to the electrogravity paper, which I showed you before, to find out what the radius of a preton is. Now, one of our experiments that we run trying to look for the electrogravitic force, the electrogravitic experiment was, is that we detected an antigravitic effect. Okay, my Patreon members are well aware of this. I haven't really spoke much about it in public. I'm not going to put it out in public until I've nailed it down completely. We have to build a better experiment. Now, another byproduct of the, this research is I came up with the Distinti Biot Savart model. This replaces the legacy Biot Savart model. The difference is in the regular Biot Savart model, this operator is a cross product. For new electromagnetism, this is a op, this is a vector divide, and because of that, this is a vortex. Excuse me, expression. So this is not a vector field. This is a matrix field, just like the source field that it comes from. So you can see we have a complete unification of gravity, electricity, magnetism, uh, matter, everything. And the next release is going to be the cosmology series where we're going to show the high, uh, the, the large scale ether models that show how galaxies work, how galaxies form, all of that stuff. That's the very large scale stuff. That's the next release coming up. Okay, so the plan forward right now is to complete and copyright the cosmology paper. There's really not a lot of new stuff here. A lot of this is basically based on the original videos released on the Distinti site over 15 years ago. There's some updates and some corrections on that. But this paper is going to occupy the month of December. And But what typically happens when I write papers is I get major epiphanies that will expand the contents. Uh, and I just had one regarding red giant stars. And so this paper will probably take all of January as well. So while I'm doing that writing process, I'm going to start producing the rules of acquisition videos for the Ethereum Mechanics YouTube site and the Patreon. And I'll probably produce a video on that every other week to give me some more time to write the paper. Uh, of course, Patreon members will get a stat of every week with what the paper progress is and any epiphanies that occur. Okay, after the paper is done, we start producing the cosmology videos. I'm guessing it's going to be in the ballpark of 10 to maybe a dozen videos. And of course, Patreon members will see them starting probably late winter and at least a month later in the spring. That's when we begin the public release of the videos. After we get done releasing that, we go into the Gaxum experiment. I'll be constructing the experiment, hopefully get the construction completed by end of spring. And we'll execute the experiment during my summer vacation around the 4th of July. So after cosmology is complete, we're going to return to electro, new electromagnetism to finish up the loose ends, the electrogravitic experiment with the anomaly and the antigravitic effect. I have a new variant of the electrogravitic experiment. Then we're going to do the sturm gerlach simulation. I might do this over Christmas break. I don't know, just to, just to get a, a little break from all the cosmology stuff. And then finish the version 5.2 of the paper, which includes all of the new updates, the uh, typo corrections, whatever, whatever, whatever we have. 
Okay, and then after that, since we're done with all this and we've got everything going from matter all the way up to cosmology, the big stuff, then we can finally do our deep dive into ethonics. Ethonics is the holy grail of ethereal mechanics. And I believe, I believe that this anti-gravitic effect that we see here is part of this. Uh, I'm sorry, the anomaly that we see in the electrogravitic experiment is part of this. So that should be very exciting. But we need to complete all this stuff to make sure that everything that we have going on top of this is solid so that we have a firm baseboard for going down and going down into the rabbit hole here. But this is the holy grail here. So thank you. This is the end of the status. Have a great rest of your weekend.